St. Barbara Taylor Bradford has just come into the studio, one of the best-selling novelists of all time, selling tens of millions, 90 million copies of her book. And this year she's marking an extraordinary 40 years since her debut novel, A Woman of Substance, was first published, and Barbara joins us. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon will launch a scathing attack on the Prime Minister today when she unveils her party's election manifesto in Glasgow. She's going to claim that Boris Johnson is dangerous and unfit for office. The SNP Westminster leader Ian Blackford joins us now. He's in a position to form a government but needs your help and would a second independence referendum form the basis of that deal? Um, we believe the Scottish Parliament should have the right to hold another referendum is if there is clear and sustained evidence that independence has become the preferred option of a majority of the Scottish people. Well, currently the polls don't show that. And secondly, or if there is a significant and material change in the circumstances, such as Scotland being taken out of the EU, but Jeremy Corbyn has pledged to hold a second referendum on whether we leave or remain. And if we then remain, why would you need a second referendum in Scotland? Highlights or lowlights of the campaign? The, the so question far. I was going to ask is, is on the basis of that interview, four times Jeremy Corbyn refused to apologise for the rampant anti Semitism that has infested the Labour Party in the last few years under his tenure. Um, what, what do you make of this furore that's erupted over Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party, and anti Semitism? This Jews. Uh, believe that Jeremy Corbyn and his party are anti-Semitic. The chief rabbi yesterday came out and said he's unfit to be prime minister because of the anti-Semitism streak in him and his party. It does beg the question, if you share this view that this is such a serious matter, uh, why on earth would you even contemplate Doing a deal. Getting into bed with the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn to do any kind of political deal over independence in Scotland. Surely the principal thing to do would be to say we are not going to do business with a party or a leader that is so contaminated by anti-Semitism. That's the forces in Parliament to make sure our... OK. Your, your position on referendums is quite interesting, isn't it? Because... You don't want to accept the result of the referendum on Brexit. You don't want to accept the result of the referendum on Scottish well, independence. Is there any result of any referendum that you would accept? Out of the union, all one big happy family, why do you want to smash up the United Kingdom? and go for independence, the very thing that well, Leave voters uh -huh. in the Brexit campaign wanted to do, the thing that you apparently abhor. How can you be so uh, abhorred I think very, I think... by what happened with Brexit and yet want the exact same thing for Scotland? I don't get it. Off from England and the rest of the UK is going to have a massive economic impact on Scotland, isn't it? And when you ask for nobody's, your second... Nobody's talking. When you have your uh, second referendum, what deal are you going to put to the Scottish people? Because we've already seen the problem about asking, you know, leave or remain, but without a deal spelled out. Are you going to perhaps get a yes vote in Scottish independence referendum and then go and try and do a deal with the rest of the UK? Are you going to put it back to the Scottish people when you've got that deal so that they can say, yes, that's exactly what they voted for? Because otherwise, aren't they going to be going into it blind, exactly as, as people are accusing 
us of going into the 2016 referendum? With Brexit, according to the Remainers, has been this issue of a hard border in Ireland. What do you do if one part of Ireland is in the EU and one isn't? Mm. What do you do, right? I and mean, everyone agrees there has to be some kind of border somewhere. Mm -hmm. You seem to think that that's the case for Ireland, but a completely different kettle of fish if you were to be independent of Scotland. I mean, if you're going to have a separate well, entity as part of the EU as you want in Scotland, you've got to have a border with England. Where would that border go? How does it manifest itself? And how do you avoid a hard border? It's exactly the same conundrum that we have well, in Ireland, surely. And the argument in favour of the nuclear deterrent is it has kept the peace. There's not been a nuclear weapon used in anger since the Second World War. It has demonstrably worked in maintaining a nuclear peace. If we were to unilaterally disarm ourselves, why would we not then put the country at greater risk? Exactly what you haven't done. You've talked about nuance and about right, rules okay. of engagement and yeah, everything well, else. I, I, what you I, haven't I've, done is I've, if it, yes, actually, ca if it because... actually came to it and it was lawful to do so, would you give the order to... But there's a lot of dancing on a pin. It shouldn't be a, difficult, it shouldn't be a difficult question. And the, the reality is when you're the leader of the country, you don't have time for nuance or meetings or focus groups. You've got to make a split-second decision. And if your armed forces tell you they have this scenario and they can do it, you have to give that order to protect the people. Yeah. You know, it's very... I mean, these questions about the, the nuclear missile uh, defence system, you know, these are massive, very important questions. People can make their own minds up about the answers they're getting, and to be fair to Ian Blackford, he came on he got there. And, and he answered the questions, but these are significant, important questions, mm -hmm. as is the idea of breaking up the UK and him suggesting we can just fix the border with technology. And this yet, apparently the, the border is this is it's still being used as the excuse. An unsolvable problem. Yeah. So how can in, it be in Ireland? How can it be unsolvable in Ireland, but perfectly easy to fix in Scotland and England? It, well, it doesn't make any sense. Well, in the same way as they they find themselves in a very difficult position, don't they? They want independence for Scotland. Mm. But they want to be part of the union. Well, they, they, the whole Europe. sales pitch for <laughs> is better together for European Union, but better apart for the UK. Mm. A, again, there's an inconsistency, isn't there, ideologically. If you believe in all being one big happy family and better together, as the SNP does about Europe, why would you be so implacably opposed to that in the United Kingdom? Anyway, we have so many guests coming up. We have Malcolm Gladwell.